Hey there, I'm Rocky Jr. and we're here to talk to you today about why Boondocker Performance Clutching should be the very first mod that you make to your Maverick X3. So what we're going to talk about today is the Performance Boondocker Clutch Weights and how those come in different sizes and how that will make your buggy perform at top notch. We have a Can-Am clutch here off of the vehicle and if you're unfamiliar with where this is located then we'll show you on the vehicle where this is at. But This kind of gives you the idea of how this works. If you've been running side by sides for some time it's likely that you've changed a belt and you know everything about where to find this and how to change that belt. Um, the Can-Am clutch is very unique. They use a lot of weights. Most of the clutches out there are using um, three weights and the Can-Am is using six weights, which is really cool because it gives us a really nice positive uh, shift characteristic. It also helps the clutch, I think, stabilize well. And, uh, and this is why there's, it's just a fantastic clutch. And so we wanted to make a premium product that complemented something that's already just top notch that came on your Can-Am. So if you're not familiar with how this works, the belt lay, lays down in here in this groove and it sits all the way down in the bottom when you're idling or at, um, at, at no speed, basically zero vehicle speed. So this clutch has these cam arms in there, which are often referred to as weights. And I'll pull one of these out. This is a stock one. This clutch is all loaded up with Boondocker Performance clutching already, but this one weight is stock. And so we'll pull that out. It sits in there like this. And so what happens is as this clutch is spinning, this weight wants to fly out like this. And when it flies out like that, it pushes against a roller that's up in here. And that forces these two sheaths together. And that pinches that belt together. And then the belt rides further and further up in this clutch. Now, there's a secondary clutch, or the driven clutch, as this is the primary clutch or the drive clutch. It squeezes the belt together, and then that raises that belt further up in, in the sheaves here, and then it pulls the belt tighter down into the driven clutch, or the secondary clutch, and that's where we get our, sh our shift characteristics. So it's kind of like on a dirt bike or something where you would change the sprocket in the front, and if you went smaller with a sprocket in the front, you were in a lower gear. If you went bigger, you were in a higher gear. Likewise, in the rear, on the rear sprocket, if you went smaller on the rear sprocket, then you were in a higher gear, meaning you'd have more top speed. Or if you went bigger with the sprocket, you would be in a lower gear, meaning that you would have less top speed, but more torque off the bottom. So these two clutches work together as the belt changes ratios as it goes out, as, it, as this weight so as this weight flings out with more engine RPM or road load. So what we've done is we've developed a, a clutch system that replaces this, this weight with this weight. You can kind of see the difference in the profile on those. And so this changes as this weight flies out, this is going to push the roller into a little different position. And we've We've optimized this on the dyno. And so what you, you would see is we'd look at a dyno chart and we'd come up with the stock weight and it would just kind of, the dyno chart looks really, really, really shallow. And then it comes up to full RPM and full power, kind of like that. So we started developing a weight that would shift out and the, and the power would come up fast. And then what you end up with on a lot of characteristics is that it comes up really fast. The power comes up and the RPMs come up and then the RPM spike and then they come back down and settle down. So we took special care to make sure that we come right up to the RPMs that we want to run at, and then we leveled out. So what we did is we went straight to the dyno and we started proving this out. On a 17 through 19 X3, we found that with a stock turbo on it, no matter how you tune it, with a stock turbo on it, we made great horsepower up until about 8,000 RPMs. And after 8,000 RPMs, we would start to lose horsepower. And so we would see this on the sand. If, if you're experienced with this, you might find out that if you've clutched really light to try to get me, say maybe 8,400 RPMs, that when you put it on a big load, when you start hitting a, a, a long hill or start racing, at the top of the hill, you're back down to 8,000 RPMs. What we found is that's where the peak torque is. And so the peak torque would start to fall off really steep after 8,000 RPMs. So clutching to try to make 8,400 or 8,200 RPMs 
would sound great and feel great and it's kind of like kicking the muffler off your Honda. You think it's fast because it sounds like that, but it's not necessarily running better. So proper clutching is really, really key. We want to be in the right RPM range for the torque and the horsepower. Now, when we start to modify these with different intercoolers and different turbochargers, different camshafts, things like that, then we can change where that peak torque is and it might require a little bit different clutching. But for the main topic of what we're talking about, we're gonna say that the 17 to 19 Can-Am needs to run 8,000 or maybe even a little bit less. It wasn't a big horsepower increase between 7,800 and 8,000 RPMs, but we wanna to get to that peak RPM right now and we want to hold it there that's the beauty of a cvt clutch is that you don't have to come up through the torque and up through the rpm band you can go straight to 8000 and then it's supposed to be if it's calibrated correctly it's supposed to just hold 8000 the entire time okay so what we started out with is we looked at this the factory weight on the can-am is really unique it's very 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 flat it has almost no, what we call profile to it. The profile is very flat, doesn't really have any arc to it. And so it shifts out very linear, linearly. The weight, where the weight is on the weight, it kind of has this bump on the back. Now this weight is out of a 20 RR, and it's a little bit different than the 17 through 19s, which had a really kind of a big round bump back here, which would cause this weight to engage and start to upshift really early in the RPMs. And so that caused kind of this, this slow feel, feel um, you know, as you just, as you're just taking off, it starts kind of the slow feel. And we would see this on the dyno. We would see this, the RPMs come up and start to ramp up and kind of on an angle, a, a trajectory like this. Now we started to mess around with profile and we gave this this different shape and, and we could find out where we needed to adjust the profile to bring it uh, instead of on a trajectory like this, we would come a little more steep and it'd come up like this. Now, the other thing you don't want to do is build a a system or a calibration that brings us up over our peak RPM. So we don't want to spike up to 84 and then have it come back down and settle in at 8,000. Sometimes that feels great, but the art, but the acceleration isn't, isn't what it really could be or what it really should be. One of the other things to keep in mind is that there's a balance between RPMs and what we would call road speed. And so you want to put the power to the ground at the right time. You don't want to just rev up like you're slipping a clutch or like you're in too low of a gear. You want to actually translate that into tire speed on the ground. And so you don't want to come up so fast that the belt isn't really clamping hard and, and driving that power to the ground, but you want to come up fast enough that the tires can actually propel the vehicle faster. So sometimes high RPMs will actually produce a slower result. So one of the other things that we want to talk about today is that the Can-Am X3 drive clutch, the primary clutch, has six weights around the perimeter of it. And so this is a we very well-balanced clutch. And I think that what that does is it helps keep the clutch, as it's pinching down on that belt, that belt is just around the front, it keeps the clutch very stable. And so it keeps the clutch very much in line around the belt. So you can picture that the belt comes around the clutch and there's no belt on the back side of the clutch. And so the clutch, the belt would want to push the clutch out so it opens up like this, right? And so that those extra weights around it kind of keep it square and in line all the way around. So we wanted to develop a clutch system that took advantage of all six weights. The other thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to make sure that the profile of these weights was matched in every single position so that all of the weights are doing a similar job. So there's other ways to do this. Some guys are, are, have been trying to you know, swap maybe just two weights. They leave some weights out. Um, we were recommending that you use all six positions and that if you do stagger weights, that they all have the same profile and that you stagger them three at a time. So that would mean that you would go three, one, skip a space, two, skip a space, three, skip a space, and then fill the empty alternate spaces with another weight. So that brings us to why we have three different weight options. And so starting out with a stock vehicle, you're gonna wanna go maybe all 45s. Now this can, this can depend. Are you a sand dune guy? Are you a desert guy? Are you driving in California? Are you driving in Colorado? What's your altitude? What's the horsepower level? 
Do you have a tune on there? What kind of tires are you running? There's a lot to know, but don't worry because we're going to make it super easy for you. We have a lot of experience and we can help you get the right combination to make your buggy perform. This Can-Am clutch, because it's six weights and the weight is so evenly distributed, if we stay in a combination where we're using alike profiles and we only mix and match weights three on three or else all six of the same, meaning that we could take three of a 45 and three of a 50 and mix them together alternating around the clutch or we could go all six fifties or any other combination of the two because it's so much fine tuning around this, the clutch is very forgiving. And so being able to get the right calibration and getting it nailed down is really very simple. So what we've done is we've spent a lot of time on the dyno calibrating this clutch, making sure that the weight is in the right place on the, on the weight and that the profile is correct to match what it is that the demands that we're looking for out of the Can-Am X3. So why boondocker clutch weights? Why are these the ones to have? Because we've put this together with an adjustable package without having to mess around or fumble around with magnets or, or anything else like that. You know, an adjustable package, it's really easily to, easy to install, but it also is a matched, well-calibrated package. So you really gotta think about this as a calibration. And so that's a fine tuning. It's really coming in and making this just right. Can-Am's done an excellent job of building a clutch that is there, it's robust, it's balanced, it's, it's doing a really good job. All we wanna do is calibrate it for our specific need. Boondocker support is here to help you. We've got, we've got charts to line up with tire sizes and horsepower sizes. We have personnel that are ready to just walk you through it. Whether you wanna message us on Facebook or if you wanna give us a call, whatever's comfortable with you, we're here to help you through this whole process and help your buggy perform. Why is this the first mod that I would make? It's always the first mod that I make. If I'm going to the sand dunes, I put sand tires on my buggy and then I make sure that the engine is operating in the right RPM range. So many guys are going for horsepower tunes first to try to bolster the horsepower in the engine and it just doesn't ever put it to the ground. And so what we wanna do is bolster the horsepower to the ground. This is where we wanna start. Let's get this clutched in there and get it set up. If you made one mod to your buggy today and you wanted to feel the difference when you push the throttle, these clutch weights are gonna do it. This will be, I guarantee this is gonna be the biggest bang for your buck. You will put these weights in and you'll love it. And if you don't, you let us know and we'll take them back. Another thing that's really unique about this Can-Am clutch is that the clutch weights come out very easily. So we can pull the clutch weights right out of their position without even having to pull the belt. That means that this clutch kit is really easy to install. If you can change the belt on your Can-Am, which you should be able to do or else you shouldn't be driving it, then you can change these weights out yourself. You don't have to take it to the dealer. You don't have to, you don't have to find a specialist in this to do this. We can get you hooked up with the right parts. It's something you can tackle yourself. There's no specialty tools needed either. It's just a Torx bit and an eight millimeter socket. They come right apart and they go right back together. These aren't just a weight for the sand dunes. We've calibrated this weight to work in almost any situation. They will engage a little bit higher than your stock weight and they will have a higher RPM sooner. And so it keeps you in a low gear early, but then it shifts out really, really well in the mid range to keep you in the right gear at the right time. So if you're not a really aggressive, just sand duner or desert racer, I don't know what you're using your Can-Am for. There's so many of them out there and everybody's having so much fun. I'm just confident that this is the right clutch weight for you. It's gonna put you in the right gear for every situation. This clutch kit is complete. We're gonna configure it for your buggy, for your needs, and it's gonna come with all six weights, all of the bushings, everything you need. This stuff has been developed to work with the stock springs, and so you don't have to do anything else. Part of the reason that we did that is to help the ease of installation. We wanted to make sure that you didn't have to change springs. Changing springs is really difficult to do. It's something that a lot of people need to have their, their shop, their dealership, or else if you have an independent shop that you deal with, they need to have that work done there. It requires specialty tools. Installing these 
Weights does not require specialty tools. If you can change your belt, you can change these weights. For more information on this product, contact us at boondockers.com or comment below. We'd love to hear your comments. Those of you that are running them, let us know how they're working. We're gonna do some more videos like this covering a lot of different products. So if you wanna keep up with the latest on what Boondocker is running on our own buggies, then don't forget to like and subscribe, share this with a friend, and we'll see you next time.